Rarangi maunga tu te ao tu te pō. Rarangi tangata ka mate ka mate noa. Rarangi raraunga ka ao ka ao ka awatea. Kia ora mai tata katoa. Kia ora everybody. As we all know, today is the world of technology, the digital age. But we also know associated with that is information and the data world. Today, StatsNZ has brought together some speakers to share their thoughts on tikanga Māori and the data world. Please join us, listen in, share your thoughts as well. I'm Rhonda Paku for StatsNZ. Eo ku hui a kai mana wa tēnā ko tō rarau mai ki tēnei kaupapa ki tēnei wānanga e aro hae hae ana tēnei pakirehu he taonga te raraunga. Kia ora everybody, welcome to this Facebook show for Statistics New Zealand. Make sure to check out all the information on stats.govt.nz and also follow us on Facebook at Statistics NZ. I'm Te Arahi Maipi and it's my job to find out is he taonga te raraunga, is data Atonga. So it's not about me finding out, telling you, it's about me asking these experts that question. First of all, our expert panel is Kraitiana Tayuru Tena Kwe. Tena Kwe. We've got Ngapera Riley Tena Kwe. Kia ora. And also Tauhena Re Tena Rawatu Kwe. Okay. So these three people are going to be sharing their thoughts on a wide ranging issues around data, and we want you also to share your thoughts and all the comments. But as we go on, I want to just get a bit of an introduction Twitter style. Not the, the, the pie pie quarter because we've only got about 20 minutes or so. So first of all, Kraitiano, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you relate to data. Sure. I've got a background in digital and data and how tikanga Māori can be um, used with, tika, uh, with digital and with data and how that can be used to uh, predict the future of data and technology. Wow, interesting. Ngā pera? Kia ora. I'm new to the data world, six months in as Deputy CEO of Figure NZ, and we're trying to take all of New Zealand's information, public information, and make it free and accessible for people to use. Good point. Yeah. To? Uh, board member of uh, Housing New Zealand, just finished yest yesterday. Uh, board member of uh, Crown Forest Rentals Trust and also uh, member of the Independent Māori Statutory Board. Um, the data world, it's actually um, social media is, is my bag. Well, I want to ask you guys, first of all, before we get into the topics, is around your everyday use, just pretend, you know, it's a normal day, you wake up, you have your coffee or whatever you have in the morning. From the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, what's the typical uh, use of data or social media that you do every day? Sure, um, I mainly use social media just to promote news items that I think is of interest and to get um, views of uh, people in my network and to see what professional colleagues are up to in their professional lives. Yeah, Facebook's my preferred medium. Um, I use LinkedIn as well on a professional capacity, but I love Facebook because I can connect with family, friends, business, and I'm actually doing a lot more business via Facebook and Messenger these days. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm mainly on Twitter, um, but I'm across Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, I use it for all sorts of things. So, so as soon as I get up, I check the news, I check the overseas sports uh, results. Um, Throughout the day, um, I like to interact with people um, on various issues, sports, politics, mainly politics during the day. Um, and at night time, again, um, it's back to the, the original. Uh, have a look what's being said, have a look what's, what's been going on in the world. Yeah, I'm typical when there's uh, Queensland are winning, I'm across everything. Right, when bro. they're losing, you, I'm dead silent. You're very you quiet. Very quiet. My, yeah, I've disappeared off the face of the But that doesn't plan. happen very often. No, 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 no. It's been a good 10 years, but I'm pretty quiet this year. <laughs> but I want to ask you, in regards to the information that you share on your Twitter, on your Facebook, that news, do you see that data as a tonga? Yeah, I, 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 um, I'm not a believer that data is the tonga. Uh, data is information and, and collecting that information is for, you know, how to get from A to B, how to build a house, how to blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, how many um, uh, apprentices uh, do you need? In terms of ta taonga, taonga is something that you want to protect and you're very careful about who you share that with. Now, so what we're talking about is a, is a platform and, and something else. Not, they aren't the same. Mm. I'd have, to, I'd have to disagree in the, in the sense that um, if I use the analogy of reo, I do believe that data is a taonga, same way as I believe te reo Māori is a taonga. Um, 
it is something that we have to protect, but if you don't use it, if you don't use data and you can't access it and, um, you know, then, then it's, it's not as useful, it's not as powerful as it could be. So yes, I do believe data is a taonga, um, but there's, you have to understand how to use it. The same way with te reo, you have to understand a lot of context behind it before you can be proficient in it. And if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Mm. Um, and as we increasingly go into a world that is surrounded in data, I think it's really important for everyone, particularly for Māori, to understand it, not be afraid of it. Um, yeah. Mm. Um, personally, I think that um, data is a tonga, so I'm very careful what I do share. Um, I just share common public information which is not private or is not going to hurt my, my family or myself. Um, I mean, yeah. Well, not a lot of rubbish. Well, as typical as <laughs> two against Toto's of uh, Rowan, his own waka at the moment. So, uh, again, again, as per normal. Mm -hmm. But personal details, mm -hmm. personal pictures. Yeah. But then to the point where, so that's about yourself. And then it starts getting a little bit wider where it's whānau kōrero. Things and into things like whakapapa. Where does it kind of draw the line? So, toe sitting, and I'll come to toe in, in a second, but in regards to that taonga, the next word that usually comes with that is tapu. Mm -hmm. So, at what point on this type of medium and social platform, uh, social media, is taonga to that's fine, put that out there, share it with whoever, to the parts where you start getting a little bit precious that, ah, no, 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 no I'm not sharing that with anybody. I think for me, um, every time you use social media, you automatically give away all your intellectual property rights to everything you share. So you need to consider that before you put it on social media. Uh, I'd never put a photo of my tipuna on the social media. Uh, when you consider it goes through the pipes, it goes under you know, people's pakus, through anywhere, through um, um, radio waves, you know, going through people eating kai, through other people's bodies. I just, yeah, I draw the line on things like that. And that's why I do think, yep, that, that stuff is tapu. And um, I'm a firm believer that if you take a photo of something, you're taking a bit of Modi off the living thing, and then you're putting it into the digital world where it, um, it's yeah, giving away the property, intellectual property rights and ownership of that data to um, un, yeah, faceless American corporations and other people who will then manipulate that data, um, make money off that data, and yeah, you've got no control of it anymore. Mm, I think it's important to understand the distinctions. There's a lot of different type of data, mm. right? You ask a young person, a data is what you top your phone up with. You know, that's <laughs> data. Um, and then there's personalised data, which can identify people. And then there's public aggregate data, not personalised data. That's just information and numbers. Um, for example, how many smokers are there in New Zealand and uh, how many Māori and, and, you know, demographic data, those kinds of things. Um, with regards to tapu, yeah, that's a really interesting question, and um, I think it depends what type of data you're talking about, you know, whether that's tapu, if it's whakapapa data, if it's data really personalised where your iwi live and, and identifiable uh, beneficiaries, for example, um, that's really, that is, that is a bit tapu, that's a, that is a taonga, and that must be protected and acknowledged. Um, but the aggregate data, I believe, um, and, and how to use it, Yes, it's a taonga, but we've got to understand it in order to really use it properly for good. See, so you generally said that the, this data isn't a taonga. So within that scope, are you quite happy and free to share whatever on there? Or do you have your boundaries as to what's good for the, to share yeah, and what I, that stays I, personal? I do have uh, uh, um, boundaries, and I suppose the only boundary that I, that I have is putting naked photos up. <laughs> and so, and, and I, 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 okay, it sounds funny, uh, but that's my limit, you know? And so everything below that, um, um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, like Kareitiana says he doesn't want to um, put a photo up of his, of his tupuna. I'm the sort of person who says, oh, hello, I, I want people to, to share the knowledge uh, that Wahine Kino is my great-great-grandmother, you know? And, and what a beautiful woman she was, she was, that she still is, you know, in my mind. Um, my, my view is this, if you think it's a taonga, if you think it's tapu, sweet, mm. don't put it on there, mm. okay? And that's why I respect what, what, what Kreitiana is saying. Um, me, I, I, I don't class that stuff because, you know, I just think that, uh, yeah, of course, there's always one person in the world, seven billion people, there's always that one rogue, you know, that, that's going to use it for nefarious reasons. 
and the same with corporations, same with all sorts of photos. You know, I mean, there are photos of me that, that don't belong to me. Getty Images, but they own my, my image. I don't, I don't really care. You, know, you use it for whatever, whatever reason they want to, apart from you know, advertising, and they don't uh, do a kickback to me. But, you know, this whole thing about, th this is what social media was for, was to share, was to put out your views, whether they're right wing, left wing, middle wing, whoever, whatever. Um, it was about sharing. That was the initial reason for social media. Is, is, do I have a point here that are we too precious? Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Like, we're talking about extreme circumstances that happen somewhere in Kazakhstan where somebody got identity theft or something along those lines. Are we a little bit too uptight about what we share and what possibly could happen to it? Well, again, I think it comes down to what type of data that we're talking mm. about, right? Um, and, you know... If, you've got, if there's good intentions behind sharing and teaching and use, using information for good that's going to help future decisions, that's, that's ka pai. If, if the data is going to be taken, for example, if somebody wants to get a hold of Māori stats around unemployment and they want to use that um, to, you know, make whakahea our people or um, whakaiti, then, you know, that's not good. But that's going to happen mm. because it's the nature of open data mm. and having information out there. So that's why we want to teach people how to use it and, and think about the responses. We talk to government agencies and private sector businesses um, and, you know, data is hard. It's hard and it's changing all the time. So you just have to be ready. And that's why having discussions like this is so important because... It's for so long, data has been seen as the realm of the geeks or the mathematicians or the statisticians. But kohanga reo tamariki can use data. Everybody can use data. It's about breaking down the fear around it and having the kōrero. When you, can I say, when you have a look on social media, what's the number one thing, especially when you see Māori people using it on Facebook or Twitter, that you think, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Why do you, <laughs> why do you, do you put yourself through that? Sure. Um, they're mainly um, photos of themselves and their, their babies and their children, um, photos of the dead, um, someone mentioned before. So you, you have an issue with them, photos of them and, and their kids on there? Uh, yes. So I know people can um, exploit people's, you know, physically ex exploit young children when they see photos of them. Um, those images of children can be, their faces can be put onto other images for um, illegal things. Uh, it's, there's just no limits what can happen to those images. So, mm. Interesting. Yeah, um, I, I, I went to put a, a photo of my moko up um, and got told off by my daughter and my, my son-in-law. Not told off, you know, very respectfully, because um, I would have told them where to go. Um, but um, that sort of uh, initiated a thing in, in me to, to uh, be careful about, um, uh, you know, who I, I put up. So I suppose if you're in control of it, that's cool, but once you, once it goes out, you're not in control. Anybody can use it. Yep. Oh, I was going to say, and if, though, if your children grow up and become quite aware, spiritually aware, and tikanga aware, then they're going to question why, why did you put my photo all over the internet, and wow. why did you yeah let, you know different aspects of my you know my modi, and why do I get? Um, yeah. But most Maoris don't believe that. That's that's oh, just look, that's generally that's speaking. No, no, the no, yeah, on you, my timeline you, you, is all my kids. Yeah, 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 yeah I love seeing you know, kids on, on there. Yeah, okay. yeah. In saying that, so the majority of people, yep, same type of thing, very, very freely about their image, about their information, about dirty laundry and things like that. That might possibly come back to haunt them a little bit later on. But do you feel as though that we need better tikanga around, you know, so general guidelines or because at the moment it's free for. Mm. You know, and depending on who you are and what kind of uh, state you're in at that time, you know, it de determines the type of information. Do you think that, generally speaking, there should be a bit more awareness about what is tikka or good practice around that? Well, well my, my thoughts are that guidance is always a good thing. And actually, people are sharing information because they're actually just a little bit unaware of that, that they're, they're sending all the, their personalised information out to an American faceless mm. corporation. Um, so I think that awareness is important, and it's kapai. If you're fully aware of what you're doing, and you know that this information is being collected about you, and you're kapai with that, that's good. But I think guidance is always a good thing, and when it comes to tikanga, um, yes, we should be considering this, because 
because everything is so new, we just actually don't know what the implications are going to be five, ten years from now. So I think guidance and awareness is always important. Mm -hmm. Are we getting better or are we getting worse as the years go on about the type of information that we share? I, I think we're getting worse and we, need to, we do need to consider, well, what is going to happen in the future? I mean, we look back at our, um, our tipuna and it was called to stop speaking Māori, to blend into with society, so we did that. We, we thought it was the right thing to do to give up our gods because that was what society wanted, because everyone did it. Um, land, we thought, well, yeah, we'll just, you know, we'll give it to, you know, the, the colonisers because, yep, that will help us, you know, get ahead in life. And now we're saying, yep, we're going to give our data away and we're going to forget about all of our privacy because that's what everyone else does. And I think we can look back in history and say, here's a lesson. But... You're shaking your head. <laughs> Oh, I, I think that, um, you know, um, I, I, might, I might be from the wrong generation, um, I might be from the wrong side of the track, um, I mean, might be a lot of things. Um, but what we don't need is more regulation. It's we don't need a group of people telling us what to do. For goodness sake, people... Um, People are adults. In fact, a lot of people that, that, that use uh, social media aren't adults. You know, they are kids. But, 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 but um, I, I, just, I, I, I just hate rules and regulations, I suppose, that, you know, ask any... I had no idea. Ask any, <laughs> no idea that was the case. Ask any one of my teachers. Um, yeah, look, I, I just think that you, you've got to be careful. You, you've got to do all this. I mean, these two here, they're from a different generation, especially this one. Um, but they both said something that, that, that worries me. And that was the, uh, like a, a mini accusation that an American... Uh, corporation is going to use the information. America is not the only country. New Zealand, Australia, England, Africa is a continent. Um, you know, so, so let's not get bogged down in this fear that America is going to, to do something to us. I mean, at the end of the, yeah, end of the day, this, this, this is the world of seven billion people is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as each day passes, and what we're talking about is the use of technology to better ourselves and our, and our, and our children and the world. Mm. So, so I think, if, I, I, look, I agree with some of the stuff that they're talking about, and it, and it is about, you know, growing. Um, but again, I, I uh, rail against too many rules and regulations. I get from a consumer standpoint, so a lot of the things that I go on social media for is to share family, you know, catch up with people and things like that around business context with LinkedIn. But a lot of it that I actually appreciate is that when Facebook is, sees my activity and then they start chucking up ads into things that I'd be interested in that I never knew was, was even there. So that's a positive thing for me because I'm on there to, I'm looking for stuff and I'm wanting to be in, uh, interesting or to buy things. What's the worst case scenario? So from your two perspective, when you're saying you're being protective of certain things that you put out there. Mm -hmm. What do you think would be the worst thing that could happen when, when you're thinking, no, I'm not going to do that because this might happen? Sure. I guess for me it's going to be um, artificial intelligence, which is very, very close to becoming a, a big reality. And then that artificial intelligence um, profiling me, profiling my friends, profiling my family, and deciding, oh, well, I'm statistically likely to be a criminal because some of my friends are criminals, or I'm statistically likely to die of cancer because of my family. So then being targeted by uh, medical companies or but targeted by law enforcement, by governments, it's, I think it's all, uh, yeah, it's a reality at the moment. So. Mm, I guess, um, well, it's not perfect yet. I got sent an ad for an old people's home the other day. <laughs> 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 I don't mind that Good from a consumer part, you know. I think that's actually one of the cool things about it is having personalised. But what I do worry about then is um, not seeing an open view of the world. If you're only getting one source of information um, and in one side of the story, you know, just left or right or whatever, um, that you're just feeding you're just feeding one side because that's what it's feeding you. Whereas actually, to, in order to be knowledgeable and seek wisdom, you've got to have all angles. And so if it's only feeding you one, one lot of information that it thinks that you want to know, then yeah, that's, that's a little bit of the area. It reminds me about. of the early days back in Hotmail when I kept on getting uh, sent uh, messages about Viagra. I said, no, I've got enough kids, thank you, I'm fine. Uh, but interesting 
the two contrasting views, but what about government information, government data? Do you see that as a taonga? No, I, no, I don't. And I, think, I actually think that um, it's an essential that governments um, have an, uh, not only data, but the use of data and, and the free uh, availability of that data, not only for government, but also for the public. Because that's how we um, uh, should make policy based on, uh, it, it should be evidence-based. How many houses do we need? Um, how much money we have to spend on welfare? All those sorts of issues, transport. So, you know, and that should be a two-way thing. It shouldn't be protected by government and for only government. It should be for, for the community, for iwi, for whānau, for hapu, um, to use as they see fit as well. So that's that open data. Yeah. Oh, I do see it as a taonga, again, and I think it's very important. Um, well, it's a, it's a taonga in one way that there are certain elements of it that do need to be protected, and that's why we have the IDI and things like that. Um, yes, Toe's absolutely right. We do need to be making decisions based on information, but the thing with data is that it's not perfect. You have to understand the gaps in it. You have to understand the context in which it was gathered. So for Māori in particular, who many of whom have a mistrust of government, over, over time, um, you know, yes, we do need good data for Māori, um, but we need to get better at the way we collect it and the type of questions that we're asking. And, um, you know, there's an awesome group, Te Mana Rauranga, Rauranga uh, the Māori Data Sovereignty Network, and a whole lot of experts that are constantly having this discussion. And I do think it's important. But I'm a huge proponent of open data. And yes, we have to, we have to make sure that our people are using it because Data holds our stories, important stories of our country that we can use to make decisions and funding and all of those things. Um, but there are certain elements of it that really do need to be protected and it's something that we should all be interested in. Could I turn it to you? I, I, for the first time through this, uh, I've seen three heads nodding. <laughs> it's the first time. Do, do you agree? Yeah. Uh, yes, I was going to sleep. <laughs> 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 yes, I think it's, um, yeah, any government data is a taonga. I also, reckon, I also believe it needs to be labelled as a taonga so it gets um, treaty recognition because there is some um, data that needs to be shared with iwi. There is some data that needs special, um, needs to be treated specifically in a specific way mm. with, um, yeah, with the care and recognition. And I, but then I hear open data, but I, I think I always hear people talk about open data, but they put open data inside a commercial database program. Mm. So I think we need to look at the, the back end as well and say, mm. is that open source? Mm. And if it's not open source, let's, yeah, make Just it. Just on the back end of that, so mm. that's about sharing that data on a government basis, but what about the process of collecting it and holding it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm really interested to get your views because you're on a real physical sense. Mm -hmm. You have some strong opinions on that. How, how do you yes. view that? Sure. Uh, I, I don't like the idea that our data or our tonga is being put inside a database where we have to pay money to mm -hmm. leave it in there and we have to pay money to look at it. And then that data gets um, encrypted and spun around all different ways which can only be read in that commercial mm -hmm. package. Um, I want the data to be in an open open software where uh, the data is available to anyone without cost. Um, of course, you have to pay for your normal services, but you know the actual software itself should be open. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I mean, I, I agree with um, my colleagues here that, that you do have to um, watch, um, you know, what is available and and and, and how um, you can store stuff in a central database, but you can how you can also access that stuff. Oh. I'm a great fan of trying to look, uh, go back and look at all the old um, news clippings. Mm -hmm from the turn of the century, uh, you know, and, and um, it's becoming harder and harder to access that information um, unless you've got a credit card, you know. Uh, it, it's just, you know, it's those sorts of issues that will be ironed out um, and hopefully with the help of, uh, um, you know, pe people uh, uh, that are, um, are, tr are trying to make it accessible to everybody um, for their own use. But, um, yeah, I, I'm generally... Um, I'm agnostic about a lot of uh, uh, you know, data, how it's collected. I mean, as long as it's not collected by the cops, you know, and, 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 and uh, the SIS and that, you know, and, uh, for, for um, uh, racial profiling issues and things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I already know that Māori are sick, poor, dumb, unemployed, you know, um, so, you know, we should be throwing money at those sorts of things. And, and, and I, I personally 
You get sick and tired of the statisticians and the researchers asking over and over and over the same questions. Mm. You know? mm. And so we have in a, a report in the 1970s that basically says the same things that a report said in 2014 about Māori. Mm -hmm. you know? and I said, uh, there are too many people out there and organisations using Māori data mm. just for Peter Coyne. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? that's, that's a big issue and um, yeah it's go on say you agree with me <laughs> <laughs> no I do agree with you I do agree with, but there's a big problem in that our country's data sets are in a big mess at the moment and actually the majority of the data that we see collected is actually not collected for what we need it for mm. it's actually most of it is collected as a byproduct of a service you register your dog you register your car you um, enrol in a course, you go to school. All of these information sets are um, collected, but not, you know, there's probably the census and a few others that are actually designed to get information. Um, but even then, I, I feel there's a lot of important information around technologies and things like that that are missing from those data sets. So this is why it's important to keep asking the questions and for our country to keep being curious. Yeah. Well, we've run out of time to ask questions for you guys, but it is never running out of time for you online. Make sure to share all your opinions. We'd love to view them. We'd love to see them, and we'd love to discuss them on Facebook as well. But just to sum everything up, we started off with a Twitter version of who you are and what you're about. I just want a Twitter closing in regards to what you learned and what you possibly might be changing now after this discussion on your online use, or nothing at all. Or is it exactly the same? Yeah, my opinion is still the same. Data is a taonga and needs to be um, treated with, yeah, as a tapu. Yeah, um, my opinions are a little, a little bit the same, but um, yeah, just keep learning. I want people to keep asking questions about it and, and pushing the boundaries of it because um, yeah, it's an exciting journey and we should all be on it. Hashtag no change. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see that all plastered all over Twitter straight after this. And going to tell you now to go to the top of 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 the top as a people. And for right now, make sure to follow uh, StatsNZ on Facebook and also stats.govt.nz for any information about data and about anything you want to know around this whole thing. Kia ora.